And I know that all of us are encouraging this as much as we can, but this is a great collaboration that we have here. I think uh, among those in the room and those that will be attending subsequent meetings uh, that we'll be having as, as witnesses, as experts, as those who understand the various things going on, we're going to have a lot of new things that uh, perhaps have not been discussed or not even been presented in a, a forum like this. Uh, that, that we know of. So th this is a great opportunity for South Carolina to do something very important, not only for our state, but for other states and perhaps even beyond. So I thank everyone for coming. Uh, if you feel like you have to get up for a phone call or anything else, please feel free to do. We don't feel locked to your seat. We're not going to be here any more than an hour for sure. No, right? no sir. Okay. So uh, we're glad that everyone is here. And again, feel free to, to ask questions. And now I'd like to ask Tom Mulliken. Thanks, to present. Sir. Appreciate Tom it. Tom Mulliken. It's okay with you. I think I'll just keep my seat. Um, Jenny Ann said I had to use notes because otherwise I talked too long. So uh, let me say uh, thank you for coming. We had this uh, weather turned on just to give you an, uh, a feel of what we're dealing with. Some of you probably dealt with uh, a little bit of flooding on the way here. And so good to see so many old friends, Mayor Tecklenburg and, and people I've known around the state. And there's a lot of enthusiasm. And this is truly a historic moment. Somebody who spent the um, last 32 years dealing with projects around the world to see this kind of leadership position taken by our state is a, it's an exciting moment and we are going to get something done. So I'd like to welcome everybody to the initial organizational meeting of the South Carolina Floodwater Commission. And before I get started, I want to pay special thanks to our great governor for the strength and wisdom to assemble this important commission. Just assembling it has taken a step forward. It's a big deal that we sit here right today. Mark this down, put it in your wallet. Today is a very important day in the history of this state. We are going to take a step out. And it will be an honor to serve each one of you. And I serve each one of you, not beside you, because my goal is simply to help stand this up and unleash the tremendous talent that's in this room. Now, I take you back to 1981 when President Ronald Reagan made his first nomination for a United States attorney with a brilliant jurist named Henry McMaster. These great men would work together with inspired leadership on behalf of our state and nation. During these same years, President Reagan recognized the following, and I think it's very appro appropriate for today. If we've learned any lessons during the past few decades, perhaps the most important is that preservation of our environment is not a partisan challenge. It's common sense. Our physical health, our social happiness, and our economic well-being will be sustained only by all of us working in partnership as thoughtful, effective stewards of our natural resources. Today, we see our Governor McMaster taking another position of state national and even global leadership today our governor sets our beautiful state on course to address challenges associated with flooding and extreme weather systems in the same partnership that Pre president reagan envisioned by all of us working together as thoughtful effective stewards of our natural resources we have intentionally brought people together from all all parts of the state uh, who have very different perspectives and it's going to be critically important that we understand we have a common purpose of working for the future of our state and setting aside any differences. And I, I can assure you, having done these projects, two things. One, that is critical. There are technologies, there are methodologies, there are strategies, but what we're going to do is bring people together. And I would also offer to you that my work has left no fresh meat. So if you want to chew on something, chew on me. As we walk through this, I would tell you that what you have in front of you is, is simply a draft to get us started. There's no pride of authorship. A lot of work went to get, it, get us to this point, but a lot more will take us to where we want to go. As you look around the room today, you see some of the most esteemed business, political, academic leadership in our state and nation. The governor has given his command vision and made his instructions clear. He stated in his executive order that South Carolina has experienced numerous episodes of flooding along the coast, rivers, and low-lying interior areas as a result of rains, storms, hurricanes, and tides that highlight the need for a statewide plan to accommodate and mitigate flooding impacts in our great state. Our state will benefit from a coordinated and collaborative effort to identify comprehensive responses and solutions to protect persons, property, and enterprises, and to fully appreciate the attributes and power of the forces of nature. In these endeavors, it is vital that this state work to accommodate and mitigate flooding to lessen the negative impacts to our state's economy in order to facilitate growth, promote tourism, and assist communities and businesses struggling from repeated flooding events. And if there's anybody in this room from, from
from Marion, I'm sure you rode through. So, okay. I mean, I was with Marion law enforcement two days ago, still dealing with it. I know that you know. Uh, we have it today as we sit in this room. In these endeavors, it's vital that the state work to accommodate and mitigate this flooding. A coordinated national, state, local, and community effort is necessary and appropriate to facilitate the interaction between all levels of government and private, academic, non-governmental organizations to address these issues. Our commission will serve as a vehicle to research, evaluate, share, and coordinate measures and ideas being considered. We will develop short-term and long-term recommendations to alleviate and mitigate flood impacts to our state with special emphasis on cities, communities, and enterprises near the coast and rivers across the state. We've been asked, will this be statewide? And the answer is yes. For those of us who were a part of uh, Madam Secretary, the Joaquin, there was no part of the state that, uh, that was removed from that challenge. And we will deal with it holistically. We're going to avoid Band-Aid approaches and begin talking about a holistic strategy for our state. And believe me, when we get done meeting Governor McMaster's vision, we will have established a global leadership position. Our commission will consider all relevant studies, data, reports, expert and lay opinion on stormwater management and use, urbanization impact, coastal shoreline fluctuation, and operational financing, affordability, available grants, appropriate partnerships and impacts such as decisions have on neighborhoods, cities, counties, and states to ensure that a comprehensive, executable strategy is adopted. The guidance from Governor McMaster is clear. Our challenge is great and our time is short. We find ourselves on the horns of a three-front quagmire, which I think puts us in a fairly unique position. We have coastal erosion that's complicated by our recurring extreme weather systems. We have nuisance flooding going on today, I'm sure, in Charleston, flooding along our coastline. And we have flooding in our ri river systems across South Carolina from rushing watersheds in North Carolina, from extreme weather systems often originating in the Gulf and coming up. So we're dealing with a three-front war. Our efforts will be neither piecemeal nor driven by special interests. The governor has brought us together to bring meaningful, thoughtful, effective, and long-term solutions with common purpose. We intend to identify and unleash the tremendous talents across our state with a big tent approach. We will show the world the vision, action, and leadership of our great governor and the tenacity of the sand lapper. And that is something, and we've shown that throughout all of our history. It would be easier to go to a consistent extreme, which is what's happened, rather than to engage constructively in the center to look for meaningful strategies. Our efforts will not be easy. There'll be people who leave here and criticize us for what we're doing, but we will push forward. We will not simply try to pull the many, sometimes diverse stakeholders to the center. We will lift them to higher ground, and that's very different. We will lead everybody to this ground. The objectives of our meeting today, very, very briefly, are threefold. First, we would like to provide a general overview and purpose for the newly created Floodwater Commission, which the governor has set out for each of us. Secondly, we would like to outline the task force structure of the commission and introduce the task force chairs, each of you. And I will confess that I voluntold some people, but you're able to move around. If you, we had to start with something. I talked to JR and said, we're creating lanes and metals. So we're gonna have our mission essential task list and we're gonna move forward towards a demonstrable results. And finally, as an initial path forward, we will discuss a timeline for both task force and full commission meetings as we enter the new year. What you have in front of you is a suggested framework for undertaking this Herculean task. These are the task forces here and you have in front of you, you should have, if you don't, we got a big copy machine at my office, we'll make you one. In this book, there's a white paper. You will find fault, I'm sure. You will find gaps, I'm equally sure. Where you find them, add to it. Please don't criticize. People say, can I be a part of it? I said, yes, bring a lunch bucket. We're going to work. We will need to develop responses, perhaps aggressive milestones and deliverables, and our efforts will be measured by progress, not idle conversation. So let me just take a moment on these task forces. We will build resiliency strategies from the sea to the upstate. These task, task forces include the following. So if you have your materials, the Artificial Reef System Task Force. Evidence shows coral reefs play a critical role in wave attenuation. 
Coral reefs provide protections from storms and rising sea level and other critical support for coastal protection. The effects are comparable to artificial breakwaters that are engineered specifically to dissipate wave energy. Artificial reefs hydrodynamic features to act to reduce incoming waves and alter current patterns and shoreline adjustments behind the artificial reefs. The utilization of artificial reefs can be used to enhance shoreline protection structures. The reef structure buffers shorelines against waves, storms, floods, helping to prevent loss of life, property damage, and erosion. And as I travel around the world, I say and I'll say in front of you and I stand behind it. We have some of the most brilliant minds in the world in this state on this issue, and they'll be a part of that task force. The next task force is a living shoreline. Living shorelines use native vegetation to stabilize the shoreline. Living shorelines provide a natural alternative to shoreline stabilization methods like bulkheads, and they provide a buffering of the shoreline from waves and storms, as well as numerous other benefits, including pollution, remediation, and marine habitats. The third task force is infrastructure and shoreline armoring. I know there's already been a great deal of conversation on this issue. This task force will focus on the identif identification of culverts, ditches, and other existing water drains. We have had instances in this state where water was three feet higher on one side of the road than it was on the other because our ditches were full and the covers were full. So we have some low, low hanging fruit that we can begin with and we will, we'll identify those. And it will prioritize and make recommendations to, to bring the infrastructure to full functioning capacity. This task force will further consider shoreline armoring and stabilization by utilizing site specific methodologies that balance the needs of man-made protection and that's of natural systems. And I think we'll have plenty that will be advancing both theories and strategies. And we'll have to figure out what the right balance is. Smart river and dam security. Again, I would say right now, we the best in the world, right here in this room. An important step in better managing our natural resources is to effectively combine data sets and multiple model inputs and outputs. I'm sure you talk to the academics in this room, they would tell you that we're talking with different languages and different data sets. We need to integrate that. We need to combine that because we need to be one South Carolina for an enhanced understanding of our complex river systems and dams. Existing data sets could be utilized to develop a multi-layered geographic information system and will be to improve the understanding of river ecosystems and make better informed management decisions. The work would focus on aligning data and various model inputs and outputs into one geospatially referenced database. That's our goal in developing visualization products to display the information. I saw my long-term boss, I got a little nervous when I saw him, although I retired two weeks ago. Major General Livingston was on the forefront. Well, sir, you're there, right? <clears throat> Grid security. A key element of resiliency and recovery during a flooding event is the safety, security, and continued operation of the electric grid. It's imperative to provide sanitary essentials, uh, continued recovery, and continuity of normal activities. An important aspect is to consider connectivity. The various system control centers for transmission, dispatch operations for distribution, and the control rooms for each power generating station must be secure and equipped with backup power and sources in order to continually provide operation and monitoring of the various electrical systems. Those words were written by a man who's already stepped out to take an important leadership position, and I'll get into that in a moment. The sixth task force is landscape beautification and protection. Urbanization, clearing trees, draining wetlands, and paving the ground exacerbates flooding. This task force will examine ways to reduce urban flooding through the use of green space areas and through the use of permeable surfaces where possible. Driveways, sidewalks, patios, parking lots, and pathways can be made from porous materials that are firm but still permit water to drain. Porous concrete and porous asphalt are some of the materials that could be utilized to increase permeability. Along the coast, the careful planning and planning of native coastal plants can help protect property from storm damage and flooding. Mr. Director, Secretary, I'm looking forward to having that conversation. The seventh is national security. I'd like to thank those members of our armed forces for coming Major General Livingston, I see the Marines from Paris Island, thank you and God bless the Marines and for all that you do. The shifting hazard of increased flooding amplifies risk for people, 
I should, forgive me, Brian Hilferty with the RCENT is over. From Shaw, thank you for being here. And I got a very nice note from Lieutenant General uh, Garrett, and we appreciate his kind words of encouragement. Valuable assets, essential infrastructure, and important economic industries such as energy and shipping. This task force will be charged with identifying potential risks associated with flooding events and make recommendations to prepare for and minimize those risks. Extreme weather events could make critical facilities unusable or necessitate costly or manpower intensive workaround that would be acceptable to military operations. This is another key priority of our governor. It doesn't take much. You can find it on the internet. The military is a $24 billion economic driver each year in our state. You then flip over to DOD and you find that there will be moving operations from those places that can no longer sustain extreme weather systems. We will be on the front of protecting our military and these assets in this state. The eighth task force, state, stakeholder engagement. In my opinion, as we start out, this is one of the most important areas. Attention to stakeholders will be critically important throughout the process to ensure understanding, appreciation, information sharing, legitimacy, and commitment to produce collaborative efforts which result in unique solutions. Two years ago, I finished a big project down in Fiji that involved fishermen and their fisheries. It involved the indigenous. It involved the government. It involved the miners. And what I realized when I got down there to help draft those model standards is there was far more important than the technologies or the words that we would agree on was bringing people to the table because people are they're passionate about their environment. And I'll promise you, if they're not in here, they're going to be out there. And so we are going to have to learn how to get along. And it's the only way we're going to make progress. Because it's a lot easier to impede progress than it is to ensure it. We are going to put different stakeholders on this committee. And we're going to find a way to find that higher ground. It's too important. This is a generational issue for South Carolina. The ninth issue, and we're lucky to have our congressman elect. Um, and we, we have him, Congressman Rice has been to Camden a couple times. Members of this task force will be charged with identifying sources of, and securing federal funding to supplement. JR, thank you. And I know that you're knee deep in this. Any and all Floodwater Commission task force initiatives. Potential funding sources include DOE, DOI, DHS, NOAA, which was authored by a South Carolinian. I know that because I worked on that subcommittee. And the lady it was my first boss, I, I, I saw her earlier. Where is Deb Sterling? Deb, I hope I'm doing okay. I'm bald, but I'm still trying. Um, and the final thing is we are going to make a way and find a path to make water our friend, and that's economic development. And you see examples. Mayor, I know you've been to the Netherlands and looked at what, what's going on there. Go to Oklahoma City. They created economic development in that desert around a canal. We can do these things when we put our collective minds around it. A challenge exists. Is the dean of the business school, thank you for being here, sir. And you, I, you are going to play a very important role in this process. And I know that when you got the invitation from the governor, you're like, this is flood water. Yes, sir, and we are counting on you. The governor expects to see an entire industrial sector built around water. And we know with our business graduates and doctoral candidates and your faculty, we'll be able to do that. Expansion of our lake system. No, no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> Two or three billion in four or five years, and we'll be in great shape. Expansion of our lake system, including canals and off ramps through river diversions, could open opportunities for lake and or canal water sports while providing for potential electricity generation. I, I had several calls with some folks out in California to ask because they've been dealing with flooding now for 30 years. And I said, if, if I talk about off ramps, would that be a silly idea? And they said, no, that's probably the best idea. And as the research they did, they looked at our, our Santee Cooper lakes. And I know Babs Henry is here. Uh, Babs, where are you with Sandy Cooper? Thank you for what y'all are doing. We can use those lakes and maybe expand some others to address this. And that will be an important part of what we're doing. Those are the 10 broad areas. We would like you to consider these areas. And if you'd like to change or add yourself, by all means do. But as I say, just bring a lunch bucket because we're going to work after Christmas. Included in your packets are draft white papers, which we fully expect you to edit. And we'll be happy for you to edit as we move forward. And please remain open-minded as we prepare these strategies. At this time, I want, to, I want to take a special moment because a lot has gone just to get us to this point to thank one of our great leaders here, Keller Kassam. 
because in Keller, it's a great case study. I called Keller on a Friday afternoon late two weeks ago and talked to him about the Floodwater Commission, and I asked him if he'd be willing to do it. He said he'd be willing to serve this governor in any way he could. Described it a little bit. On Monday morning, I got a five-page memorandum setting forth an overview and proposed path forward, which I hijacked from this presentation. His energy, his intellect, and his battle rhythm, they set out uh, what I think will be our standard. We need to move forward with purpose, and we are counting on your energies and your enthusiasms and your initiative to move forward. It will be the elbow, the elbow grease will be the, the fuel that drives this, because you're not showing up for extra pay, I hope. Uh, for those of you who know a little something about the State Guard, it's not something I'm going to ask for. We are, we are going to count on your volunteerism to help us pull this together. So let me say it's very likely that the storms over the last several years are not an anomaly, but rather a new normal. If this is true, many of our families across our beloved state will soon be in harm's way again, maybe today. It's our goal to begin preparing our resiliency strategy so that our state will welcome any circumstances. We intend to make water our friend. It really will, it will count on our survival. We will embrace this challenge no different than South Carolinians have embraced challenges for more than 300 years with dedication, intellect, and purpose. When this commission has finished its work, we will hand over to our children and our grandchildren a state that is as beautiful, protected, and prosperous as the one we were blessed to inherit. The great polymath Leonardo da Vinci once explained that I've been impressed with the urgency of doing. Knowing is not enough. We must apply. Being willing is not enough. We must do, and we will do. And I know that because the governor has my mobile number, and I'll get yours. We are not seeking idle conversation and curiosity. We will be thoughtful, deliberate, but we will find resolutions, and we will move forward with purpose. So I say to you, I agreed to serve on this commission at the request of one of the greatest leaders of our generation, Governor Henry McMaster, a leader who is purposeful, determined, and who has an abounding love for our state. And there will be those who criticize him for taking this step. Just stepping out is an important first step. One is more than one. A leader who has demonstrated this, and moving forward, I'd simply like to paraphrase the words of one of my personal heroes, President Theodore Roosevelt, in that we will cherish our natural wonders, cherish our natural resources, cherish our history and romance as a sacred history, for our children and our children's children, we will not allow anything to skin our state of its beauty, its riches, or its romance. Thank you. I'm grateful and honored to serve our governor, our beloved state, and serve each one of you as we move forward. Now I'd like to take a moment to introduce each of the task force co-chairs and would simply ask that you stand to be recognized as I call out your name. And as I'm calling this out, I'll say again, if you want multiple task forces, bring two lunch buckets. We'd like to have you. The Artificial Reef System, Director Taylor. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Dr. Will Ambrose. Mayor Blaine Bellamy. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor Barber. Thank you, sir. I know Front Street has uh, had some water issues lately. King Tide. Yeah. <laughs> um, Representative Crawford. Thank you, ma'am. Representative Bradley, I believe, is calling in. I spoke to him, and I believe he's on the phone. Major Ham. Thank you. And for now, that's that will be the group that will be organizing around artificial reef systems that will start our resiliency strategy in the ocean. Living Shoreline. And I'm, I apologize. Some of these names I'm going to do the best I can. Elizabeth von Kolnitz. Thank you. Excellent job. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for being here. Dr. Gaze. Thank you, sir. Dr. Goharian. Thank you. Dr. Elko. Thank you, Nicole. Dr. Young. Thank you. Infrastructure and Shoreline, Secretary Hall. Thank you, ma'am. Dr. Vizzo. Thank you. Director Sterling. I think he's uh, still on maternity leave. Had two beautiful twins that just got back from uh, the uh, NICO ward. Uh, Jay Faison, who I believe is calling in. 
Uh, Senator Goldfish. Thank you, sir. Representative Cogswell. Call in. Uh, Sell Hemingway. Thank you, sir, for all you've done on this. Smart River Dam Security Task Force. Dr. Pre Petrovasia. And uh, I would love just to read you his resume. Uh, and if you haven't met Lynn, you've missed a, something, a real treasure in our state. Director Wilson is here, even though he's retiring very soon. Thank you for your 37 years of service to DHEC and all that you've done for our state. My good friend and boss, Major General Bob Livingston. Thank you, sir. Dr. Kadri, was it close? Okay, thank you. Okay, here we go again. Dr. Sasanacule, probably missed it. Thank you, ma'am. Dr. Duke Brantley, thank you. Senator Kent Williams, I think he's on the, on the phone. Representative Richie, yeah. Thank you, Richie, for coming down. Thank you. We should have ridden together. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jeffrey Allen. Thank you, sir. Colonel Marguerite McClam. Thank you, Colonel. Grid Security. Senator Thomas Alexander over the phone. Keller Kassam. Thank you, Keller. Babs Warner. Thank you, Babs. President James Clark. Thank you, Mr. President. This man's an energy source all on his own. If you haven't had a chance to meet President Clark, uh, pack a lunch and lace them up because this man is pure energy. J.R. Sanderson, thank you, J.R. Sure. Landscape Beautification and Protection San, uh, Task Force. Commissioner Weathers, thank you, sir. Director Parrish, thank you, Dwayne, for all you did to make this and all, already getting us organized. It's gonna be a pleasure to work for you, sir. Senator Tom Davis. Here. <laughs> Welcome, sir. <coughs> representative Stavernakis, and he has a representative here today from Ways and Means staff. There she is. Okay. Great. Thank you. Bill Bruno. Thank you, Bill. National Security Task Force Brian Hilferty is over from our scent. Um, sir, I'm Colonel and Major from uh, Marine Corps Recruiting Depot, Paris Island. Please stand to be recognized. Thank you for being here. And General uh, Bob Livingston again, Major General Livingston. Stakeholder Engagement Task Force. Mayor Tecklenburg. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for all you're doing already. Mayor Bethune. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor McCain. Councilman Johnson. Thank you, sir, for being here. Mark, I saw you, Lazarus. Thank you, Mark. Chairman Vic Raw. On the phone, okay. Chairman Somerville. Thank you, sir. Director Ray Farmer. Thank you, Ray. And finally, uh, federal funding, Congressman Tom Rice. They're voting today, so he's on the phone. Congressman elect Cunningham. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you. Senator Chip Campson. Deb Sterling. Thank you, Deb. Economic development. And we have uh, already heard about the great things the Dean plans on doing. Thank you, sir. Um, Kelly James. Brian Derenberry. And Joe Ellers. He's out of country. Thank each of you for your time and commitment to this vitally important service to our state. Finally, I'd like to suggest that each task force schedule. Governor wanted to get us together before the holidays, get you some material, begin chewing on it during your free time, so we gave you a little bit. Um, we will have staff. I'd like to thank uh, DeWitt Zimp and the Pew Charitable Trust. He's already weighed in and is providing uh, technical resources. So we'll have that and we'll have a series of graduate students and other students that we hope that the universities will be lending. The full commission will plan to meet quarterly. Thanks, Dwayne and PRT. The first quarterly meeting is at the Founders Hall, Friday, February 8th. The second is at Paris Mountain State Park, June 15th. The third in Shiraz on August 31st, which we'll probably be preparing for a 
for some floodwaters and the Greenwood State Park on Friday, November 8th. These meetings will be on Saturday. Charles, okay, I'm sorry. Thank you, sir. So for, for me and my family, God bless each of you for volunteering, and uh, I hope you each have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you, Governor. Are there any questions, suggestions, or anything like that? Yes, sir. I'd like to have a copy of that very eloquent speech you made, made it to all of us. Yes, sir, we can email that out. I think there's a couple extra copies here if you want a hard copy. Yes, sir. Yeah. You? I suggest prioritizing standing up a website as soon as possible. Get a known drive off without material. Yes, sir. We're doing that. We'll have that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Senator? Mr. Chairman, do you have, uh, do you have chairmen that are running those subcommittees so that we can coordinate with their staff for meetings, subcommittee meetings? I think what we're hoping is that the task forces would meet and agree on who that chair would be, sir. Okay, and then we will uh, help roll in behind. We'll schedule the first couple meetings until we get things moving and then staff it up. But rather than be so presumptuous as identify those people, we thought it'd be better if they decided themselves. President Clark. Will there be an opportunity to plug in um, the consortium and some of their research on resiliency, coastline resiliency? Yes, sir. Yes. The idea is we'll, we'll, as we move, we'll probably figure out things that we need to be doing. What we anticipate is having a lot of people come and, and present, a lot of visitors uh, will probably grow in number. There may be some that will fall off for various reasons, others will come on. But we, we intend to keep a steady body moving forward. And uh, anyone who has something that we believe to be of interest, uh, we'd love to hear from. And that includes an assembled group like this, as well as the various task forces. But I would urge everyone to let everybody, let everyone else know what you're doing. And if you're having a, a witness or a testifier or a presenter or some expert or someone who has some information come in, let be sure the others know about it, because uh, they may want to, the others may want to come attend as well. One of the great things is, is exemplified and demonstrated by this group is, is the power of collaboration. And I think we've all learned that if we're in silos, you can't get anything done except what's right in front of you. And so when you, when you put people together and you get rid of those silos and you have a vital collaboration going on, all sorts of things happen that don't happen in any other kind of way and they happen immediately. You don't have to read about it or inquire about it. It's, it's immediate. So that's, a, that's one of the great things we, we want to be sure to do is have assembled meetings like this, but also the task forces. We, everyone needs to know what every task force is doing in order to keep that collaborative flow of information going forward. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, did I understand that you said you were going to set the time for the initial meetings with the task forces? Yes, sir. I'd like to say for the record, I'm going to call and ask your permission before I do it too, sir. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll call and get on your calendar for... <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I realize I'm way outranked in this bunch right here. Uh, More questions, suggestions? Mr. Well, Mr. Mayor? Mr. Chairman and Governor, I just want to thank you for convening this uh, commission. Um, there's no question that water has no jurisdictional boundaries. And uh, just what we've learned in Charleston over the last four years, um, the collaboration is needed, uh, the concerted effort amongst state and federal and local leaders and, and every other kind of organization. So thank you for, for asking me to serve on the commission and also on the stakeholder engagement. And I would like to welcome everybody to Charleston when we when y'all yeah, come down to uh, uh, Charlestown Landing for the first quarterly meeting. We'll, we'll uh, share with you some of what we're doing in Charleston and I'd like to offer a, a, I don't, what time of day are we going to be meeting, Mr. Chairman, do you know? I think it's Saturday at 10.30 is when we'll begin. But it's at Friday in here. Oh, it's, it's going to be a Saturday meeting? Actually, we're open for yeah. Friday and Saturday. So if y'all even want to go down and come, <laughs> we'll invite you for, for, uh, for a road trip that you can go 140 feet down the ground to see the tunnel we're drilling as a, uh, as a major drainage project. Uh, I see a uh, agreement you like to go on the tunnel? Yeah, so, you yes, know I don't want to. Yeah. And the governor wants to go. So anyway, we'd love to have you down there for some extra activities and tours and, and 
and show you what we're doing in Charleston. So thank you. Thank you. I'm working together. Yes, sir. More questions? Mayor of Georgetown, you got a question? No question. How about Conway? I do have uh, comments. Governor, first of all, we thank you for all your support during the uh, natural disasters because we had to go from a hurricane to flooding. And of course, our neighbors in Conway and Sockesty, uh, they it was just dev devastation there. So we really appreciate the coordination and the partnership that we had across the state. Without that uh, partnership, we wouldn't have survived. Um, Secretary Hall, she was right there on the front line right along with the rest of the governor's staff, and at no time did we feel slighted. So this is, this forming this commission, uh, it gave birth during our last natural disaster. And I'm so happy that the state of South Carolina could be the leader for the rest of the country, because I've always said, I've always said that South Carolina is the key to how this country should operate. And uh, we're going we're gonna to make that happen. So just thank you again for all that you're doing for our state well, thank and you. all the cities. Likewise. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any more comments, suggestions? Dwayne Parrish, PRT? Yeah, first meeting is after Friday, February 8th. Okay. The second one in Parrish, Mountain, June 18th, is the Saturday. Okay. Clarify. Don't worry. You get something wrong, he'll tell you. Yes, sir. <laughs> thank you for that clarification. I meant to say Friday and Saturday, the first meeting. Just kidding, Dwayne. <laughs> That's a good excuse to spend the weekend in Charleston. <laughs> Any more from anyone? Well, I just think that because the city of Conway is the epicenter of the flooding, um, uh, it would just behoove me to say thank you, just like you've just heard already. Don't mean to repeat the same message, but um, we were as affected as anybody, and we certainly felt that we were not isolated and that we were never alone. Um, you're pulling this group of people together speaks to the fact that it's a South Carolina issue. We're South Carolina strong, and we're going to use that combined strength to do what we humanly can do uh, to protect our citizens and their property. Thank you so very much. While we're on that point, let me ask the three people to stand that were out in the forefront, always in the forefront, on the field with the latest storms, and one's Christy Hall, Department of Transportation. Alvin Taylor, Department of Natural Resources, and Bob Livingston, the National Guard. They were always there. That's all I got. Yes, sir. That's it. Look forward to working together. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Thank you.